Let me explain something to you if you're new to the channel. Every now and then I do something called a Cusco Uncut. Even if you're brand new to the channel, it's already obvious that I really like my editing. I really enjoy editing the videos. This is a moment where I don't edit at all. I don't cut anything and I just speak what I'm thinking anytime that I get inspired to do so. And sometimes I think people find a lot of inspiration for themselves. Sometimes people are probably like, that's five minutes of my life, I'm never getting back. I don't, it's not timed. I just say what I'm feeling in the moment and that's what it is. So welcome to your first Cusco Uncut, if that's what it is. If it's not your first Cusco Uncut, then well, I'm pretty sure you'll be sticking around, right? <laughs> or not. So, I just wanted to talk about the camera stuff being stolen and kind of how I'm feeling about everything that's resulted from that, which is a mix of emotions. Mostly good. Mostly good. It's really helped me see, not that I didn't know already, but it's just reaffirmed how strong of a community this is. Like, I went to go run some errands and came back to my computer to start editing some stuff and I was gone for like a few hours and there was, I had like a thousand notifications from Facebook, which I've never seen that before. All because of, you know, the, the camera stolen posts. If you follow on Facebook, if you follow on Instagram, even if you follow here, you know about the camera stuff and what's going on with it and how we're trying to put up pictures and get these people identified and get my footage back from the Canada show. Hopefully, hopefully, hopefully. The other end of it that's not so good, which when I complain, okay, let me, let me explain this, okay? Anybody who's been a victim of a crime can maybe relate of any sort of crime. Sometimes when you start putting it out there and you're trying to, I don't know, get closure on it, you start to feel like you're the one that did something wrong sometimes. There's definitely like things where people are like, well, you should have done this or you shouldn't have been doing that or, you know, obviously I should have had a little better watch on my camera gear. It was right next to me, but that being said, not that I couldn't have just kept it in my hand the whole time to avoid this whole situation. Also, that's being the second time this year this happened. The first time it happened, I heard there were rumors going around that I was faking it just to get people to donate money, <laughs> which, that hurt. That hurt. And anybody who knows me that knows it. And I don't want to complain. I don't want to complain too much because the, the overall message I'm trying to say right now is that this whole situation has done nothing but leave me with more positive stuff. And it's, it's easy for me to come away from something like this feeling good because it just gives me a little more perspective, you know? When I say I'm complaining about this stuff, I do, I do, I feel like I'm complaining and that I basically have nothing to complain about in the grand scheme of things. You know, I've got food to eat, I've got a healthy, happy family, all my arms, all my limbs, I'm alive, I'm healthy, I, I can, I've got roof over my head. There's so many people in the world don't have those things right now. So that's always part of my perspective and that's what I always come back to. Anytime something bad or relatively bad is happening to me in my life, I think about how much worse it could be and how much worse other people actually do have it to where my situation really doesn't seem that bad. And with this, I always see the silver lining on the cloud. You know, everybody's coming together to really try and help and get this thing resolved. And just seeing that happen is, it's a good thing. It gives me really, really good feelings inside, you know, and I'm actually feeling like I'm getting to know my, my Canadian friends better because we're staying in communication and Whereas if it, nothing had happened at the show, you know, I would have just kind of gone on, we'd have made the video. Well, maybe we would have stayed in touch as much, but this is like almost causing people to be a little more so. Like, hey, anything happened with the gear yet? Anything happened with the gear yet? And it's like this dialogue, this daily dialogue now is, is staying open. So, Canada, I love you. I do not. You know, some people were like, don't, don't think about Canada as this. Of course I don't. You know, you can run into this kind of thing anywhere in the world. I could run into it here in my hometown if I if I really put myself in the right situation or wrong situation. But overall it's good. Overall everything's good. Obviously nothing's gonna stop me from making videos. I'll film on my cell phone if I have to. Um, obvi obviously again, obviously, obviously, obviously the big bummer is not having the footage from the show. I could go on about that over and over and just become a broken record about how much I really wish I had that footage. Cause there was so much good stuff on it. <laughs> okay, I'm not gonna dwell on that. Bottom line, welcome to your first Cusco Uncut or your last Cusco Uncut. <laughs>
gosh, it's been a minute since I have been here. I think last time I was pretending to be Brian, <laughs> which was actually really fun. Um, and gosh, yeah, a lot's been going on. So it's been maybe a month or more since I have had Hillary time, which gotta be honest with you, I'm not loving the name of my segment. If you guys have any suggestions, let me know. And to be honest, I've never been like the biggest fan of my name. I don't know, just something about it. But yeah, we just kind of randomly came up with Hillary time. So if there's anything more creative that you guys think would be appropriate, let us know maybe we could spice it up a little bit. <laughs> Man, so much has been going on. Uh, Noah started kindergarten. We decided not to put Eli in preschool, but he did have his first soccer practice yesterday. Mom life, um, getting back into my own yoga practice and uh, exercising, which has been really, really awesome. Um, kind of getting in a nice flow of routine and just having Leia and Eli at the house while Noah's at school and it's been great. Noah is loving school. It's a real sweet school. Really like the teacher so that's been going great. Just wasn't ready to send Eli to preschool yet. My instincts were just telling me that something was off and then when I had that realization that like oh he doesn't have to go to preschool it was like oh yeah okay cool he can stay home one more year so it's been really nice to have a little more time just kind of one-on-one -on -one with him and baby Leia is doing great she got her first two teeth she's just like the sweetest little thing Brian let's see so you all know he was in Canada for a week I was a little scared before he left because a week alone with three kids sounds kind of daunting but we actually it was okay we got into our flow and it didn't seem like it went by too slow his parents came over the weekend so I could work and so that kind of broke up his trip I think a big part of it is that when I was pregnant right after having baby Leia um, I was getting migraines and I've, I've had them on and off um, since high school really. So I was having them kind of a lot towards the end of my pregnancy and so then I was getting anxiety because I was always thinking when am I going to get my next migraine. I was afraid when he was gone I was going to have a migraine. I'm really lucky they're not terrible. They're not as bad as some people get. They're not like dehabilitating for hours and hours and days but it's still something that you know I do struggle with. I have not had one now for months. Knock on wood. Uh, at least three months, which is awesome, maybe even more. So him leaving doesn't give me as much anxiety because the, the, it's just not something that I'm, I'm as worried about now. I think it was all hormonal. We definitely missed him and we were ready for him to be home. I was pleasantly surprised with how smooth things went and I really have to give a big shout out to them because they are just good kids. They are really well behaved for the most part and um, I love being with them. So as you all know, Brian's camera got stolen again. Really just bad luck that it's happened twice now this year. I don't think there's any deeper meaning to it besides just that there's a-holes places and when you have nice camera equipment something people want to steal because it can't really be traced you can sell it for a decent price you know I mean it's just something that thieves are interested in so you know I've recommended to him to get um, a shoulder strap so that when he's walking around shows and stuff he at least can be just like have it on him at all times but he's opposed to my shoulder strap idea don't know why shoulder shops are awesome I mean I think he's just gonna have to be a lot more diligent when he is at these big shows where there's tons of people you don't know that everybody who's there is specifically there for the show it could be people that go to those events specifically to steal from people um, so you know I even recommended like a lockbox where he puts all his lenses and all the other gear when he's not using it you know just little steps that uh, can be taken hopefully prevent this from happening again. I don't really know what else to say about it except it sucks, but the realities of life, you have something nice and there's people out there who wanna take it from you, which is really shitty, but it can be replaced. You know, at first he's like, oh, the police aren't gonna do anything, but I'm like, but it's Canada. Like maybe their police are different than our police <laughs> and they actually will be productive over a theft. I know they have plenty of crime in Canada, but maybe not to the extent that we have in our country, so maybe theft is more of a priority. I don't know, that's my stereotypical perception of Canada and 
I hope that their police might actually do something about it. But, you know, I told them you might as well count it as a loss because that thing was probably pawned off um, the day that they took it. So I don't think it's much now about actually getting the camera back, although the footage would be great to get back. I think more now it's like the principle of finding who did it and making sure that they don't mess with anybody else in the reptile community again. You hear me? <laughs> if you're watching. We've definitely had some humps and bumps lately and it's not, not all uh, delicious matcha tea and sunshine, but for the most part, life is pretty good right now and uh, I can't really complain. I've got a healthy family and feel like I'm kind of back to myself too after pregnancy. That pregnancy kind of took a toll on me and so I feel like I kind of got my mojo back. And uh, if there's anything that you guys are interested in about me, please let me know. I'm a yoga teacher, I'm a massage therapist, um, I'm really into nutrition and, and health food, and I'm getting really into gardening, even though I suck at it. My plants back here have not been doing so well, so I'm trying to get my green thumb improved, and I've got some books, and I'm just constantly trying to learn more about gardening, and especially in this area, because we do get extreme temperature differences. So finding kind of what works. I mean, I even killed some succulents. Like, who kills succulents? But I guess it is a little more common than I originally thought. But um, my indoor plants are doing great. My house plants are doing really well. So I feel like I've kind of got those down, but now I'm trying to work out here. We do have a few melons growing, but unfortunately the, the weather's kind of shifted and it's getting into the 40s at night and only like the 80s during the day. I don't know if, if the melons, they're each about, probably each about that big right now, but I don't know if they're gonna make it, but it's been fun watching them grow and showing the boys how that works, starting them from seed. But yeah, if there's anything you guys are, are interested in me elaborating more on parenting, yoga, I mean, really anything that uh, I'm passionate about. I'd love to hear from you and hear what you might be interested in or if you just like hearing me blab on <laughs> like I'm doing now, then I can do that too. I like to talk. Sometimes I wish I had a podcast. So yeah, I've got my matcha. It's got adaptogens, so it's got I think chaga and reishi mushrooms in it, which are great for brain function. This has got homemade cashew milk in it, which is super easy. You just soak some cashews, blend them up with some honey and water. Homemade cashew milk. You can strain it if you want. I don't. And then this is kind of like a typical breakfast for me: sourdough toast with olive oil, avocado, sunflower seeds, sauerkraut, and some salt, sea salt. So that's kind of my thing. I'm super passionate about food. Uh, so yeah, good to see you all, even though I'm not really seeing you, but I'm seeing you, you know what I mean. And we'll see you guys next time.